Morning, guys. So I'm a little bit better prepared for the heat today. I've got a pair of shorts in the car if I need them. Um, and I've got a top in the car if I need it, if it cools off or anything silly. So I've got this one here um, blocked back at the end of the last video, um, 120. So this will be 121. Um, so I've got this block back, I've got a few little marks, I'm going to put a little bit of glazing putty in um, and then that should be ready for the next layer of high build um, I might block it back with just a little bit more um, but yeah basically you know, I'll put a little bit, actually I might put a little bit of glazing putty in scrape it off really fine I wish I could put a little black spreader I was actually talking about Arco the other day, I need to go if I actually get a chance to go into town Actually, that's a good point. Rachel's going to town today. If I get a chance to go to town, or if I can get Rachel to go into one of the, somewhere um, and get me a couple of little body full of spreaders and get some nice little plastic flexible ones. I'm running out those hard ones here, and I have the little black one here. I don't know what happened to it. I use it to put some putty around the back of that body, that glass, and putty around the back of the body. And after that, I'm just not sure where it's gone. Um, it'll be in amongst some stuff somewhere. Um, biggest problem is I, I've got such a lack of uh, just places to put things. I just tell them. <laughs> we need to obviously have a bit more of an organise and get some, some better places to put things. I've even got a lack of places to put painted parts, which is a bit of, a, a bit of an issue. But I'm just, I'm just realising you know, as you get stuff painted. It's nice to have somewhere to sit it until we get a chance to put this thing together, um, which is a bit of a pain. Like those blue shelves would be perfect if I just didn't have quite so much crap in it. If I, even if I could have a couple of shelves where I can just sit paint stuff, you know, have a bit of even bit of uh, cardboard or or something on there that was with just some, you know, just some um, foam sheet or something like that that I can just sit stuff on there. So it's not getting damaged, you know, bits and pieces, and then I can, as I'm sort of getting into that stage, where I can pop that piece on. You know. um, so yeah, I'm sort of. It's funny how you just you don't think of these things until you're sort of at that point, and you think, shit, you know, I've got that painted. I need to move it to do some more stuff that I've got. Make it put it. But anyway, so I get some glazing putty in this, and then I might just give it a wee bit more of a block back once it's gone off because that'll happen, knock down the glazing putty and then that'll set that aside ready for high build but what I'll do is I'll get while I'm waiting for this glazing putty to go off I'll get the other one set up and I'll start locking it back to this point and then you know that'll give this a chance to the glazing putty to go off in this and then I can come back and see this one um, so while I'm thinking about it I'm talking about it Sit this one over in this panel stand because yesterday I um, was having a battle with this panel stand moving around so much. So, what I did, I put that ratchet strap around it and it stops it from it's just flopping around quite so much. It still moves, but it's taken all the like, I've taken all the slack out of it, if you know what I mean. So, it can't move it's quite so easy like this one. Right, Just so you can see, because it was driving me nuts. So, this one here hasn't got that thing on it. And just with the wiggle, you can see how much that moves. Whereas, if got this one here, well, you can see that. so but this one here moves, but it's, it's only a small amount because I've taken all the, uh, all the um, slack out of the, the legs and stuff. So, yeah, I would recommend somehow like put something in between and just take that tension up just so they're not so they loose. Um, <coughs> what I might do is find something that I can put in there so at least I can still fold them up and down and whatever. But uh, not so much of an issue, you know what I mean? That's probably what, what a good idea would be to get. Um, like the little eyelet bolts, put them through there. You know, like these things, like the chains, they have a, 
you know, a bit of wire up a little turnbuckle and you could actually tension it up would be a bad idea. But, you know, whatever. But just something to take the slack out of because they can be a bit of a, a, bit of a pain in the flopping, flipping around when you're trying to sand. That's why I put those fenders on that bench around there because I just, they were moving around so much I, that you couldn't sand them because of the curve, the nature of the curves. Well, this isn't so bad because it's a bit flatter. But, but anyway, I'll get myself set up and we'll come back to you in a minute. I'll get some glazing putty in that, get that one over here, and then we'll come back to you. Righty, so what I'm doing, I'm just, the body, um, I've put some glazing putty on the other side to these tops I knocked. This is the uh, second one. I've just I knocked the worst of the top off the um, high build, and because it had some bad marks in it, I put it I, as I put glazing putty in the other one. I put it in the other one. It, it's almost dry, but I'm just leaving it for a few more minutes to harden off. So I'm just going to give the inside of it a bit of a, a bit of a block out. Um, so this is where I'm just going to use a bit of sheet paper around a piece of newspaper. I have got the proper dura block roll over there. But for the inside, it's it's not, you know, it's not going to matter much whether I use that or whatever. Um, you know, I've got plenty of sheet paper there too that I can use for sanding stuff that, you know, in round jams and whatever else. That's where that stuff, you know, comes into its own sort of type thing. Um, so I'm just going to give this a block out in here and try and get it, you know, cleaned up and, and smooth it out a bit. There's a few marks and lines in it from... Where I rolled it in the English wheel and when it was damaged, like we haven't put any body puller or anything here. It'll get another couple of coats and another block out, uh, and that'll help flatten it out a little bit. It's not going to be dead perfect under here, um, but it'll still look good. You know, if I block it out a reasonable amount, it's going to help flatten it out a little bit. Um, but anyway, so yeah, once I've done this, I'll um, I'll come back to you, um, and then hopefully by that stage, this stuff should harden off and I'll. Have a decent sand off on the other side as well. Alrighty, so at the moment, this is the uh, second one. I haven't touched that first one with extra bit of glazing putty in it. What I'm actually doing, um, I've got a partly worn bit of, well, this is a bit of 80 grit that was like, you know, I'd been using on everything else. So it's not real sharp, but it's sharp enough, if you know what I mean. Just to try and pull this down a little bit quicker first. Especially because I knocked the surface off it for a start off and then put some glazing putty in um, where the worst the marks were. I've missed a few, but we'll get them again. But I'm just trying to rip this down a little bit quicker and then I'll jump back to the 240 and keep blocking. I'm just trying to. I didn't actually realise this was quite so humpy and hollow y, but that's all good. You know, we'll get her out. Um, so that's why I'm just knocking it down with the 80 because I noticed it was. There's a few highs and lows in it. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, we'll block it out. You know, we'll either we'll either put more glazing putt in, or, or we'll just it'll block through. Um, you know, there's old there's a mark like that that I've missed it. Um, that we can put put, put some glazing putty in, but um, yeah, I didn't realise there was actually quite a few pinholes in the uh, must have been in the body pillar underneath before I put the primer on, so it actually sunk and that's why I've actually put put glazing putty on top because I thought well, it was just as easy to put it on now when I'm blocking it out it'll come up, you know, it'll come out um, instead of filling it afterwards um, that wasn't quite so bad, this was actually worse than that one I thought it was the other way around but it doesn't matter, all good so yeah, I'm just using the bit of worn 80 first try and knock this down quick-ish without being too rough and then once I've got it down a little bit further than this and I'm running out of uh, orange peely marks, you know, from the from the primer surface, um, then I'll switch to the 240 and we'll keep knocking it down. So I'll just get it down a little bit further than where I am now. And, uh, yeah, then I'll switch. Right, I might just record this piece in 4K so I can zoom in a few pieces when I actually edit it. But... Um, a beginner's sand is tip, okay, you're getting down to, say you've done your body filler, you've done your body work, done your filler, whatever, you've got your high board on here and you've blocked it back to this point, and you think, and I've done this way back in the day, like I've been doing this as, pretty much as a hobby since, um, you know, the early 90s, you know, helping dad way back in the day, and 
possibly even earlier than that. Um, and I would do this, you know, got your little, got your little sand, get your little sanding block, and you'd be trying to sand that mark out. Don't do that. <laughs> just keep blocking back. Okay, I'll just touch steel in one spot. I've got a couple of little spots just right on the edges. I'm not panicked about that. Um, but you know, I've got one wee spot here. Where I've just started to touch steel. But all this here is not down to steel yet. Now you've got marks. You know, a little few marks here everywhere. Just keep blocking it back um, as far as you can. And when you've got you know, quite a few dots of steel, if you haven't got rid of your marks, or if you've got some deep ones, just block it down and um, get to that point and just stop and glaze and putty. Um, or, or something similar, you know. Um, I'm using this U pole rapid glaze. Dolphin glaze is just as just as good. It just doesn't go off quite as quick. Um, unfortunately, I've got a bit of tape over it because it got a hole in it. But um, it's this is you know sort of ten minutes sort of type thing before it goes off. The dolphin glaze, which glazes, which is, I don't know how how similar it is, but it, it goes off in about double the time. Um, it's still a really really nice product. Um, you give a coat. Um, have got you know deglazing putties and stuff like that. So you get it down as far as you can. You know, get a few, and I don't mean like big patches of steel like this. You know, just if you've got a few marks, you know, lines, whatever. Um, actually, I'll bring another panel over. Um, I can probably send it back a little bit more, but let's try and show you this. I'll just gently sit on top. But you know, I've got a few patches like this where I've got steel coming through and, it, and the odd little spot on the edge. Well, I can take this a little bit further. I don't want to get this too big, but it's barely through, if you know what I mean. We've got just a barely little line. And by the time I put another, say, three or four coats on here, if needed, um, that's not going to matter. But if you've got a big patch in it like this, it's bare steel and another big patch over like that. And bare steel, you've taken too much off. You know, you just want little, just little pieces here and there is not going to hurt at this stage. Um, you know, but you want to try and get this, your high build, and obviously your body filler underneath and whatever. Because like you can see the body filler that's on that, I'll block that. I'll put some glazing putty in the worst holes. I'll hit this again shortly. Get this keep this going, but yeah, I've done it before, you know, years ago. You know, you'd be sanding back and you'd be doing a panel, whether it was, you know, a, a quarter panel or a bonnet or whatever, boot lid, trunk hood, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to call it, a roof, and you'd have a, a two or three spots like that. You think, oh, I'll just rub that out, and then you blow your paint on, and all of a sudden you get this nice glass finish, and then all of a sudden, which you probably can't see, just tip you up a little bit. Hopefully you can see me. Got the camera facing the wrong way to the 4K. Um, but yeah, like you got this nice flat panel, and all of a sudden you got this little whoop in, in your paintwork, you know, and it, it'll be a little patch like that, you know, and you might have three or four of them where you've had a funny spot, and you think, oh, just rub that out, you know, I'm just trying to blend it out. But that's when you get, you know, you, you maybe put another coat of high build on it, sanded it out by hand, sort of type thing, you know, with a small block or whatever. Try and use the biggest block you can. The biggest, flattest block you can on a panel, obviously depends on the shape, but this is perfect for this because I can roll it right over, whatever, crisscross your sanding, you know, even this way and this way, if you can, you know, crisscross backwards and forwards, crisscross, you know, keep doing that because that's how you get this thing flat, you know, like glass. But yeah, don't get to get, get down and you've got this one little mark. Don't don't get tempted to oh, just rub that one out because that's when you get these really nice looking cars and all of a sudden it's got the halfway down, you know, the panel or something like that. You know, and you get around to the other side and there's another two or three spots like that. There's like this really nice paint job. 
you know, it's really flat and it's, there's this couple of little, when you look down the sides of the cage, you can see these ripples, you know, and that's probably what they've done, um, you know, or they just haven't, um, you know, they mightn't have been quite using a long enough block, you know, down on the side of a big flat car, you know, if you can get a, even a longer block, it's something similar like this, and block down like a whole side of the car, especially when you get all the doors closed and all that sort of stuff, and you can run that panel or that sanding block from one end to the other just about, you know, rub it from from into your door, into your rear quarter panel, front panel, you know, mud guard, fender, whatever you want to call it, you know, up over the top, you know, obviously do it in sections, but, you know, transition from one to the other, even onto your, from your quarter panel into your hood, if you need to, you know, to, don't, within reason, but, yeah, like if you can, you know, blend it, go from one panel into the next, you know, and rub it out, because then you'll get that really nice flan, flat transition from one panel to the next, as long as you're not making the edges, like, thick and stupid. Um, you know, that's, it's something else you've got to be careful of, you know, you might have the next panel might and be fitting very nice to this one, you know, you put a heap of body fill on it to try and get flat, don't do that. You're better off to try and pull that edge up or something or readjust the door or the fender or whatever to get it to match up better so you've only got a little bit of product on that edge and then try and maybe even just, just you have it really flat but just curl that edge over so it's not sitting there big thick because it just looks stupid. But yeah, you don't be tempted to sand out these little pieces just by, you know, and then think, oh yeah, sweet, I'm done. Just keep blocking that. If it takes you another hour to block that panel out to get rid of that mark, just do it. <laughs> That's all I can say. Anyway, I'll carry on. I just thought that was a good example of, you know, where... And, you know, a nice paint job become it can become an, a very average paint job, or you know, because it's this part of it is ninety percent of your paint job. You know, because if you can put paint, yeah, what I was saying there, sorry, it, it cut off for some reason. Um, yeah, ninety percent of your paint job um, is the preparation underneath. Like the last ten percent is you know your paint and your clear coat and whatever. You know, you can block that black and make it look really nice and beautiful. But as long as the the under stuff isn't right, what's on top is never going to be right, if you know what I mean. So 90% of your paint job is the, you know, the prep underneath. The rest of it doesn't matter if it's this isn't right. So anyway, I'll carry on. Righty, guys. So I think I'm... Um, at the point where I'm finished blocking this, um, it needs some more product on it. Um, it's possibly the odd spot I could go a little bit further, but I think I kind of need to stop. Um, there's a little bit on the edge that needs a bit more material because it's obviously a little bend in here. I could just feather that off. Um, it's not huge. I could just feather that off. It wouldn't matter too much. Um, but there's a few little marks in here. It's not bad. You know, I could probably block this a little bit further, but I'm conscious of taking more material off here, trying to get this, you know, I could use that skinny, uh, skinny, uh, what do you want to call it, acrylic block, luck, lucky block style block, <laughs> so somebody doesn't yell at me, um, yeah, I could block this a little more um, with that, but yeah, like I said, like, um, you got to go like, you got to sand from here down, you know, and you can, put, you can go across that way a little bit, but you've got to, if you go like that, then all of a sudden you end up with a line in here. If you just try to sand backwards and forwards and try and get that, you can't do that. You've got to come across on you know, an angle, backwards and forwards. Now you can sand that way a little bit, you know, and come down a little bit, but you've got to keep crisscrossing. Otherwise you just end up with lines and stuff and all sorts of problems. Um, now it leads a little bit here. I could probably get that out with blocking again, but you've got to be careful that you don't end up with a funny patch, like I said, in here. I'd rather just, you know, this here will come with even another two or three coats of high build, those little marks, um, or even, 
you know, just a little scrape of uh, glazing putty, which is like here. Obviously, when I put it in earlier, I missed some of these spots, you know, or I thought maybe some of them might have blocked out. Now, there's marks here and marks here. I need a bit more in here, here, obviously here, and here, a bit more product in here. Um, again, we're through the steel in places, you know, um, and I'm starting to break a reasonable amount of steel on this edge. That's why I said I don't want to take too much out of here. Otherwise, you look at that panel and all of a sudden it goes like that and then it's kicking up. And you don't want that because that just looks weird too, you know. You want it so that transition is nice and flat to that edge. You don't want it to come along and all of a sudden it goes because you've sanded this out to try and get these marks out. You're not sanding it flat. You're digging in again. Um, so, yeah, it needs a bit more product across here. Some of it will get with high build, some of it needs glazing buddy. Um, but it's really close, it feels really smooth. A couple of times I actually chopped back to 80 grit just to pull the material off a little bit quicker where I knew it was deeper. And then when I sort of thought I got a you know, reasonable amount of material off, I jumped back to the 240 and, and, blocked, and blocked back again to try and smooth out that surface. But, um, you know, we're not coming back and just putting one coat of primer on here. We're going to put two, three, four, possibly back on it um, before we block it back again, you know, with finer grades. So it's not, you know, I wouldn't panic too much if you did, you know, you should have got to a point you think, shit, I'm going to chop back to a heavier grit. You know, and that's why I was using the worn piece so it wasn't quite as sharp and digging in as much. But it just pulled that material off a little bit quicker and then I chopped back to the 240 and blocked it back again and, and try to smooth out and get rid of the 80 grit sand marks, basically. But I know that the high build will take them away. So when I high build this again, uh, after we put some glazing putty and knock the worst of it off, um, that's why I should have stopped here. You know, I can make these patches a little bigger. I don't really want to make them too much bigger, but if I can put a little bit of glazing putty on the worst of the stuff, some of it will come out with high build. As I said, you know, this isn't, this this isn't, this isn't, but that might, you know, and there's the odd little blemish, like that wall, you know, some of those things will, they'll just come out with high build. Even some of this will come out with high build, some, but some of it won't either, because you can see where I put putty in there and I haven't even touched it, you know. So obviously it's too low, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it's just a matter of picking your, Picking your moment to stop, you think, okay, I've still got a, a bit of product on there I can take off if I need to, put some glazing putty in, knock it off to a reasonable standard. If it's a little bit high, it's not critical. You, know, you can blow your high build on there, and when you block that back, you're going you're gonna to get it. You know, you're going to flatten that back out, and you'll probably find when you block it back out, the pieces where the, hot, where the um, glazing putty might have been a little bit high, you know, that colour will come up first. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as it's flat, that's all that matters, you know. And you haven't hit steel yet, you know. Your steel is your, um, I'll pinch a bad chad, is your ocean floor. You can't go any deeper than that, you know, not without digging a hole in it or grinding a hole in it, um, which is silly, you know. If it, if it was happened to be a really, really high spot, you know, come along with your, with your end of your body hammer or something like that and knock it back. If it happens to be a, one of those things that's an issue, you know, you wouldn't use that. But what I'm saying, say this here come up almost, you know, by the time you'd blocked it for a couple of minutes, that come up. Okay, that's an issue. Bang, bang, bang. Knock it back a little bit. A little bit of glazing putty over where you've knocked it down and block it out again, you know. And that, prop, that high spot won't be an issue. But I haven't got any really high spots that are that are screaming at me, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to leave it alone. That's possibly the only one that's probably bad, but that's probably just because that corner might be just down a little bit. And I could probably pull that. I could probably actually come along with a hammer, put a dolly on that side, and just see if I can tuck, just pull that corner up a little bit. But that's probably the only spot. But that took a long time to get down to that too. But that's possibly just why, why that is. You know, that's a, a little high spot. I can probably just... I may even better hammer that down a little bit and pull that up at the same time, if you know what I mean. If it becomes a problem, but 
I don't see any major issues, you know. Um, yeah, we'll get what we can with a bit of glazing putty, knock it back, give this another quick block back, and then it'll be ready for high build. So I'm now going to jump to that one, knock the, high, the uh, glazing putty off that because it's at this point and beyond, if you know what I mean. So it's now at the point where I've put, I've knocked it back, um, got to a certain point, right, we'll stop, we'll put the glazing putty in the marks that, that's point, you know. I got rid of some, some bad ones for a start off, but, you know, I missed some, um, just because I didn't have enough product, but I thought it doesn't matter, we'll block it back, we'll catch them in the next round. That's what you got to remember, just, yeah, don't, don't try and chase those deep holes. You know, if you if you think, well, okay, that's a really bad one. Okay, knock the worst off for a start off. Put a little bit of glazing paste, sit it aside, grab another panel, block that back, you know, and then come back to that one. If you think there's some really bad spots, you know, that you can get before you actually knock the high build off, you know, you might save yourself a few minutes later on, but it's, you know, it's one and a half dozen now that if you see some really bad ones, you know, when you start blocking it back and you think, oh, shit, that's a bad spot, you know, I'll put a little bit of putty in that. You know, if you've, need, if you've got a couple of panels to do, you know, block it back, get to that point, you know, and then you put your glazing putty and then this one here is, you know, at the next step from that one. But we'll put some glazing putty in that, sit it over here, grab that, um, put that on there, block that out a little bit more, you know, I might even attack it with 80 just to knock that off. And uh, I probably could have put a bit less in there. I probably got a little bit heavy handed, but I can probably run across that with some 80, knock that off, hit it again with 240. And like, as I said, if we're gonna put another, you know, three or four coats on there of high build, nice and thick, well, the sanding marks from the 80 grit isn't gonna be much of an issue. Um, you know, we're, when we go to the next one, we're actually gonna start on 320. So, unless, I need to go to 240 but or 220 but I think the 320 will be fine to start with so that's where we're at so I'll get this sorted swap it and knock that stuff back right so I have blocked this back the uh this is the first one where I blocked it back and then put the uh glazing putty in the worst spots there's a couple of little spots I mightn't quite have enough, but it's so close that I think I'll get it with high build. If not, we'll catch it in the next high build. Um, yeah, because there'll be one more, you know, a couple more light coats, you know, our sealer coat sort of type thing before we paint. So, like, we're not, it's not critical yet. Um, it's probably a little bit there too, but some of this is actually still a wee bit high. So I haven't knocked it back hard, hard. I'm trying to leave a little bit of extra material um, in some of the spots where I've put glazing putty. Um, but there could be the odd low spot in amongst it. But hopefully we'll pick it up with high build in the next round. Um, so that's basically ready to go. You know, and you don't want to end up with too many more. Make these marks any, probably, it's not quite so bad when it's a little bit long like that, but you don't want to start making it really wide. You know, we've, that's not too big, but you're going to run into issues trying to pull it back and cover it, if you know what I mean. Um, but I think this is really, really good. I've blocked it back with uh, 240. I knocked it, I knocked these back a little bit, start off with, with 80 grit, and then I went back over the whole thing with um, 240 again and smoothed it out. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. Like you can even see the marks in there from, uh, you know, from the original doing the body filler. Um, you know, like so that they fill up. Don't stress, you know, because I think what did I not when I originally did this body filler, like I used 40 and uh, 60 because it was just I had a bit of a mix of stuff. But um, like there's even a couple of holes there that I could probably pick up again. But hopefully we'll pick them up with high build, or again, you know. We'll, we'll get them with uh, glazing putty in the next round. There's no point trying to put something in there now. Otherwise, I'm just trying to dig, you know, making these pieces bigger and 
and digging holes to try and blend it out. But at the moment it feels really, really, really good. Um, so this one here should be almost ready to go too. Yeah, try to get away from the sunlight. So this should be off now that I should actually be able to knock the worst of this off. Um, now there's quite a lot on here. I've tried not to put it on too thick, but there's lots of little pinholes and bits and pieces that I've tried to fill up the worst of them. And then again, like I said, we'll try and hopefully the high build because um, there's getting less and less and less, they'll get picked up with the high build, you know, or if there's anything less when we're getting blocked back a bit, you know, we can put a little bit of glazing putty and keep knocking it back. And then hopefully by the time we put the last couple of coats on, you know, before paint, there's nothing. You know, we just rub it back and, uh, and paint it type thing. But uh, yeah, that's cool. So that one's ready to go. We'll do that one. Um, it's not far away from lunchtime, so I'll start knocking this back. You know, I'll probably go over lunch, and then I'll see you after lunch, I reckon. Righty, guys. So back after lunch, I actually managed to block this out before I uh, left for lunch. Come up pretty good. I'll turn the camera around. Hold on. Yeah, so I managed to get it to block out pretty nice. Um, there's the odd little mark in it, but. Um, as I said earlier, you know, a few more co coats of high build and we'll block it out again and then see where we sit there, you know, and then repeat if needed. Um, you know, we'll get down to some pretty fine grades, 400, and then probably from 400 we might even go, you know, wet and dry. Just, the, the, the big thing is you got to, you got to work out what level you're going to. Um, you know, we're just going to go for a... a better than new sort of type finish or we go and show car you know um, I don't think he wants a show car but you know somewhere you know obviously better than factory you know in 1925 or whatever it is you know this wouldn't have been would have been fairly reasonable but you know the, the quality standards back then probably weren't you know they wouldn't have been the level that they are nowadays um, so yeah, like we're we're going for better than factory today, factory new, you know, and s somewhere beyond that if you know what I mean. So yeah, we'll get it blocked out pretty nice. You know, at the end of the day, um, yeah, I'll call to go from you know from the sort of level we're talking to 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 like you know pristine you know concourse to elements or you know show car sort of type thing. You know, you're talking hundreds more hours to keep blocking and blocking and blocking and and get it like really, really, really mirror, 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 mirror perfect. It's going to be really good anyway. Um, I'll make sure it's blocked out and it's going to be pretty sweet. You know, by the time we get to 600 or something like that, um, this is going to be pretty pretty flawless using those it's acrylic lucky block sort of type things. Um, let's have something else. I got two. Um, Rachel went into town earlier on, and I said, "Call into one of the paint suppliers, you know, automotive paint suppliers, and get me some freaking body filler spreaders because um, I haven't really got anything half decent here. I've got these things, which aren't too bad. Um, you know, they're kind of flexible. Um, you know, this is kind of flexible. It's not too bad, you know, but this is really quite nice and flexible. You know, and, and these four are only two bucks." So really, I, if I'd known that they were that cheap, I just sort of said, you know, get ten dollars worth, you know, and get you know a few of each. So at least I've got plenty. But that'll that'll keep me going for for ages until I, you know, until I destroyed or worn out, and we'll just go get and you know, go get some more. For two dollars for four spreaders, it's pretty cheap, you know, fifty cents each. You can't go too far wrong. But anyway, so I'll get the set of the road. Probably what I'll end up probably do now. I don't know if I panic about those just right at the moment. I think what I'll do is I'll probably set that back up around here with a couple of screws back on the the table and we'll start blocking one of those out and see for health what sort of level we're at when they're doing them and get that blocked out because they are going to be a lot more difficult to block out than these. These are pretty simple. It's fairly flat. That's one nice gentle curve but this is as I've said in earlier, 
Uh, these are going to be black, so they're going to be pretty good. Um, and I know they're not anywhere near perfect yet. They're in, at a reasonable level, you know, but these are going to probably take, I'd imagine, probably three lots of five build and, and mucking around trying to get these really, really nice, you know, considering they're going to be black. So I'm not 100% sure what the body colour is going to be yet. It's either going to be red or blue, like, and I don't know what shade of red they were talking crimson red the other day, so I don't know. We'll see what happens, you know, in another couple of three weeks we might know that if we can get this freaking body back on this chassis and get these parts back. But, um, yeah, so I'll probably tack that stuff next. And, uh, yeah, so I'll get myself set up and we'll get around there and we'll start working on that stuff. Alrighty, guys, so... Um, I didn't even think about it the other day, um, and somebody actually suggested, you know, get a heat gun and see what happens with the, uh, paper, because you know, I was having problems every time I pulled the paper off, it would leave all the crap behind. Um, I just changed this piece, heated up the heat gun for, oh, just a few seconds, basically just run along it until it's got warm, just pulled straight off, so, we'll keep your heat gun handy then. <laughs> so, yeah, it worked perfectly. So, if you're... <laughs> Oh, using things a bit like this, yeah, and you're having that same problem, yeah, just heat gun for 10, 15 seconds, rip it off, and come off, clean air. So, yeah, it's not something I thought of, you know, it's just sometimes you just don't think about it, you know, but, yeah, come off piece of piss, so that's, that was easy. So, whoa, I'll get sand in this, I was just starting, I thought I'll put a fresh piece of paper in there, so we'll get into it. Yeah, I might as well just leave it down. <laughs> I think this is going to get broken in pretty hard um, with the 80 grip and um, I, I don't think we're going to get to 240 on this, maybe on this piece. Um, I'm just going to have to smash some more high board on it. Um, I'm cutting through it. Like I know I'm using fresh 80 but uh, you know, there's a lots of little spots here. Um, I wouldn't say there's like super marks or anything like that but just there's lots of low spots and I'm coming up on steel in a few places already so I think what I'm doing is probably the best thing just knock it back pretty hard um, get it close and then we'll blast some more high on it um, these were pretty smashed around and you know, I got I got reasonable the first time with the body filler um, you know and we'll, we poured quite a few coats on here and I'll block it back pretty hard to get rid of the worst of what the marks are get, get as much as I can and then we'll just um, once I figure I get it close I'll give it a light rub that side um, just by hand to try and um, key in all the surface and then uh, we'll smash some more high board and I'll just see if I can bring some lines in and stuff like that with this with these 80 grit um, I'll try and yeah, just dial it in you know what I mean dial it in a little bit closer and then hopefully the, the next high build will end up more like the uh, hood sides. I knew these were going to be a bit more of a, a battle just because of the, just the sheer shape of them and uh, the hell, how much work it took to get to here, you know what I mean. But anyway, I'll keep blocking and I'll come back. Well, I'll stop and talk to you again maybe shortly. See how we get on.
Righty, so I've still got a bit of blocking to do right down the edge, but that's not seen. I'll, you know, we'll clean it up. Um, I've got it, I wouldn't say great, but it's fairly good. I've got it fairly smoothed out for what I can. Um, it's definitely going to need a few more coats of high build. Um, it's just the nature of the beast with this thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, you've seen how, how much body filler I put on this to try and get it fairly reasonable. Um, and I've blocked it out a fair way. You know, there's a few imperfections that hopefully I might have to put some glazing putty in there. Um, but I think what I'll do is um, I'll give it a wee bit more of a clean up. Um, I've, I've actually blocked it, a lot of it out with 80 and then I've come back over it and, and just, I wouldn't say, I've just smoothed it out a little bit with 240 just to try and take the, some of the rough the roughness out of it and just to try and clean up a few little other bits but um, it's reasonable I think you know another probably four or five coats of high build and then we'll block it back again and hopefully we can get it a lot better dialed in um, it's just it was such a prick of a th thing for a start if it was pretty beaten up um, you know, and I haven't really tackled this sort of fender before, so I'm learning how to attack it, to be honest. Um, you know, big, flat, you know, or flattish, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s panels, you know, aren't shaped like this, though. Well, not many of them, if you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, like I'm trying to, to get all these curves and ins and outs and bits and pieces and just... You know, I'm, I'm using everything in my repertoire to try and dial it in. Um, but yeah, I think you know, a few more coats of high build. Um, you know, we should be able to get it blocked out and hopefully 240 and maybe 320. Um, it, this might take a, you know, another real heavy hit um, with high build. And then hopefully then the next one after that um, won't be quite so so bad then if you know what I mean but it's it's coming up alright for because when I first started sanding I started with a bit of 240 and I thought just the way it was coming off for a start off I knew it was going to have to just um, just tear into it with, with 80 grit and just knock it down but it, it hasn't come up bad you know I thought it might have been worse just when I started but it's blocked out fairly well um, so I'm pretty happy um, I was hoping it was going to be better but you know, I'm not, I'm not going, Ugh! you know, like I've got a lot of problems, so, you know, there's a few marks and bits and pieces and probably the worst pieces is probably this piece here because, you know, you can see where I haven't, you know, I've just completely missed it just with blocks and stuff, you know, it's still here, still here and bits and pieces, but the rest of it, um, it hasn't come up too bad, you know, it hasn't come up too bad at all. That's good. And a few more, a few more, as I said, a few more coats of high build and a bit of glazing putty here and there. And we won't be a million miles away. And block her out again. And yeah, so that's cool. It's when I first blocked it back, it's come back better than I thought it might have done. I thought we might have been chasing it harder than this, but but that's cool. Anyway, I think. I'm not far away with leaving this one alone. Um, you know, I'll just give it a scuff up down the bottom. Just because like, no, hardly, none of this is seen. This is all below the, the frame line and bits and pieces. But I'll just, you know, we'll sand it back so it's, you know, it's nice and smooth and it'll take primer properly. Obviously, same down there, around the edges and bits and pieces. And it's got to be sanded on the inside as well before we put, well, I don't have to probably sand it on the inside to paint on the outside but um, it needs a scuff up on the inside if we want to put a little bit more product on there but this is going to be stone guarded inside so it's probably not critical you know we'll just give it a scuff up when we need to and blow some uh, stone guard up in there before we paint you know and do the last coats of high build sort of type thing um, so yeah I'm fairly happy fairly happy 
you know, it's not a million miles away. It's got a, we would have chased them to do, but we're not a million miles away, so that's cool. Alrighty, I'll carry it on, and um, then we'll get the other one screwed up here. Oh well, the yeah, elf stuffed. <laughs> Box standing takes it out of you, especially when you're doing it all by hand. Um, you know, basically not using a DA or anything like that, so just doing it all by hand with my blocks and uh, you know, a little bit of hand sanding just for the odd little funny area, but yeah, I'm pretty beat. Um, it's just after four o'clock, um, but I've block sanded, uh, well, two or three panels really, and sort of done one again with some, um, put some glazing putty in, but some pieces and knocked it down a bit harder. Um, but I think by, maybe by the end of tomorrow, I should have the rear fenders blocked out, this one finished blocked out, um, and I might give the, uh, well, I don't know if I'll get to the, to the sides with the, the hood sides, um, I don't know if I'll get to them, but um, yeah, I think by the end of tomorrow I should have all this stuff blocked back out, ready to uh, at least high build again, and uh, see where we go from there. Um, but yeah, at the moment I'm beat. I'm just absolutely exhausted. So, but uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. I think. <laughs> I think I might go and have have an internet for a while. <laughs> yeah, I better give you a quick look around. <laughs> what I've done. So yeah, I'm, I'm only just really said I started blocking this piece back. Um, and even the other in here, I haven't really blocked back too much on this sort of side of it. Um, reasonably happy with the centre part. It needs more, but it's coming up pretty pretty reasonable. I haven't done anything around the front here yet. And I've sort of done a chunk of the side, you know what I mean? But it needs more. Um, and a lot of places it needs more high build, but I haven't sort of done much, too much around there. I've sort of only rubbed over that a little bit. But yeah, we're getting there. But it's, again, it's a bit like the other one. Um, I blocked most of it back with just 80 grit. Um, and when I get close, I'll give it a, a light rub over with 240 just to take the sharpness off it. And, and uh, yeah, then we'll just we'll just smash it again with high build. And if there's anything that looks bad, I might, you know, put a little bit of glazing putty in or something like that. If there is any bad marks or something like that. But I don't know, high build's not going to take up or help but um, yeah not panic too much at this point we'll just we'll get it blocked out and see how how well it comes up and um, yeah just carry on from there and obviously get those rear fenders done and um, yeah and then hopefully it's today Tuesday maybe Thursday again which is about the same time as when I painted these last, or I built them last week Maybe see if we can get them into high board again on Thursday. So that would work out nice. Let them a couple of days to harden up and uh, block them out again. So that'll work quite nicely. Alrighty, guys. Catch you later on.